At last I have learned to orchestrate, exclaimed Richard Strauss to a close friend. This statement astonishes us because we know Strauss was a great orchestrator. All of his works, his tone poems, his operas, they're incredibly orchestrated. It's like he wrote the book on orchestration. And yet this piece he considered to be his crowning glory as an orchestral work. Well, the whole piece began when Strauss was only 14 years old and he took a hike. He loved nature and he loved to climb mountains. And he took a hike with a group of his friends and got lost. Um, he was uh, caught in a thunderstorm, got soaked to the skin, and it made an indelible impression on him. So many years later, in 1899, he started to sketch a piece about this uh, mountain adventure. But it was not until the death of his close friend and colleague, Gustav Mahler, in 1911, that he actually sat down in earnest to finish the work. The idea of writing a work inspired by nature is, of course, not new. Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony comes to mind. But in Strauss's hands, the orchestration is so very particular and so very exact. It's like uh, almost like watching a film uh, or listening to a film score because every step of the hike from the uh, night, the early night and the dawn when he first starts out on the hike to the actual thunderstorm uh, where he uses a thunder machine. Now, uh, those of you who come to this concert, you will notice hanging from the ceiling an enormous sheet of metal. And this is the thunder machine, and it's only used once in the piece, but it has a very dramatic and a very uh, thunder-like sound. It really gives a realistic sound of thunder. So Strauss wanted this to sound actually like the sounds of nature, the waterfall, uh, using piccolos and high violins, all of the high instruments to give the kind of sparkle that we know when we uh, see a waterfall. So this is a very cinematic piece and uh, certainly one of his uh, greatest achievements.